This is Sky World News with Hannah Tallett. The top stories, Israel's Prime Minister has warned the US President Barack Obama that accepting a nuclear deal with Iran could be a countdown to a potential nuclear nightmare. A fire which has burned for three days around Cape Town's Table Mountain has caused an explosion at a lodge. Homes and a luxury hotel have been destroyed, along with almost 7,500 acres of land. And the families of the 298 people who died when Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 was shot down over eastern Ukraine have been allowed to view the plane's wreckage for the first time. So Israel's Prime Minister made a, a strong impassioned argument to the US Congress not to support any plan that could lead to Iran getting a nuclear bomb further down the road. Let's remind ourselves of what Benjamin Netanyahu had to say. Would Iran be less aggressive when sanctions are removed and its economy is stronger? If Iran is gobbling up four countries right now while it's under sanctions, how many more countries will Iran devour when sanctions are lifted? Would Iran fund less terrorism when it has mountains of cash with which to fund more terrorism? Why should Iran's radical regime change for the better when it can enjoy the best of both worlds, aggression abroad, prosperity at home? Israel's neighbors, Iran's neighbors, know that Iran will become even more aggressive and sponsor even more terrorism when its economy is unshackled and it's been given a clear path to the bomb. And many of these neighbors say they'll respond by racing to get nuclear weapons of their own. So this deal won't change Iran for the better. It will only change the Middle East for the worse. A deal that's supposed to prevent nuclear proliferation would instead spark a nuclear arms race in the most dangerous part of the planet. This deal won't be a farewell to arms it would be a farewell to arms control. And the Middle East would soon be crisscrossed by nuclear tripwires. A region where small skirmishes can trigger big wars would turn into a nuclear tinderbox. I've come here today to tell you we don't have to bet the security of the world on the hope that Iran will change for the better. We don't have to gamble with our future and with our children's future. We can insist that restrictions on Iran's nuclear program not be lifted for as long as Iran continues its aggression in the region and in the world. So was it worth Mr. Netanyahu delivering his message to Congress at the cost of alienating the Obama administration? We spoke to the Middle East analyst, Mayor Javadanfa, who's in Tel Aviv. I think America, as American government, may be less sympathetic to the current Israeli government. And if Netanyahu wins the elections again, we will have at least two more years of one of the worst relations between the Israeli sitting Israeli government and a serving American government. And now that Netanyahu has challenged Obama so overtly inside the United States, on the home turf of President Obama, President Obama may decide to get even, and we, the citizens of Israel, could end up paying for it. When Netanyahu spoke, some people gave him standing ovation, but some people sat on their seats. This is unprecedented for the state of Israel, and this is something for us to worry about, because Netanyahu could end up doing what Iran exactly wants to happen, and that is to make Israel a partisan issue in American politics. I think Prime Minister Netanyahu is absolutely correct that Iran must not be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. Full stop. Everybody in Israel supports that goal. However, it's his way, the way he's going about it, which is creating much controversy and division in the state of Israel. He is dividing America, whereas before it was united in its support for the state of Israel. Also, sometimes he is scaremongering. The Iranian regime is a bad regime, but the Iranian regime is not Nazi Germany. And Netanyahu keeps using this example, getting a deal with Iran that keeps Iran away from being able to assemble a bomb within one year is paramount. 
that's the key uh, timeline, the one-year breakout. And I think so far from what we've heard from President Obama, that's what he's going for. Let's see if the Iranians accept it. But the added bonus of a deal with Iran would be that we would have inspectors on the ground in Iran inspecting all the nuclear sites. And in all honesty, they would be doing the job for, for Israel because Israel wants to know what's going on, going on in Iran's enrichment sites. What's even more important, and this is the key issue, we don't even know if Iran is going to accept Obama's current offer, which Netanyahu is so worried about. Iran could even turn around and say, no, what Obama is demanding from us is too much. And if Iran does say that by the end of March or by the end of uh, June, that would mean that the current trip to the United States by Netanyahu and the cost which we've paid for it in terms of our damaged relations with America would have been for nothing.